The term momentum is borrowed from Newton's first law of motion that says a body will remain in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. In what started as a study of mass and velocity, the term momentum soon made its way to other applications like sports and of course investing. Hi everyone, my name is Shankar Nath and today's video is on the popular and ever evolving subject of momentum investing. In the next 20 odd minutes, we look to explore and understand new areas like what is momentum, how to build the strategy, the inner workings of a momentum index and of course, how has this style of investing performed in India? I'm sure you'll find the content we have put together very interesting and if there are any parts you particularly liked or would want more information on, do let us know in the comments box below. Conventional investing says that you buy low and sell high. This has for decades been the core of investing irrespective of whether one ascribes to the growth or the value style of investing. But momentum investing is different. Investors who practice momentum investing are not discouraged by a high price or by the fact that the price of a stock is rising. On the contrary, these investors are actually attracted to a company whose price is on an upward trajectory and they pin their hopes that this upward price momentum will continue for some more time. In other words, while the traditional investor thinks in terms of buying low and selling high, the momentum investor aims at buying high and selling even higher. Now, momentum need not always be positive and upwards. There is also downward momentum whose premise is that stocks that have underperformed recently have a tendency to go down even further in the short term. It is this high higher and low lower effect that the entire momentum strategy hinges on. So what causes this momentum effect? There are two plausible explanations. The first reason comes from behavioral finance which links it to investors over and under reacting to information which in turn leads to pricing inefficiencies. A second explanation is offered in terms of timing where investors initially react slowly to new information and then do a hurried follow up on it which drives momentum upwards or downwards. It is because of this catch up nature why momentum investing has always been a short term strategy which often plays its part over 6 to 12 months. Having said this, what is definitely not a short term strategy is our endeavor to produce well researched and relevant content for our viewers. So if you're new here, then do consider subscribing to our channel. And if you have been watching our videos for long, then do share them in your Facebook and WhatsApp groups so that more people can profit from these videos. There are many ways of implementing a momentum investing strategy. Incidentally, the most cited method was created over 25 years ago. The strategy involves a set of rules aimed at investing in the best performing stocks over the past six months for the subsequent six months. In the same context, one can also short, in other words, sell the worst performers from the past six months for the next six months. In fact, let's put this to the test and create our own momentum investing model. We do this by taking a defined universe of stocks. In this case, let's go with the Nifty 50 stocks. We then map the historical stock prices at a six month interval. So we use September 2018, then March 2019, then September 2019, March 2020 and September 2020. This gives us four six month windows, which is sufficient for our basic model. Now, once we have this data, we go back in time to March 2019 and identify the top 10 stocks which had performed the best and the worst 10 stocks for the previous six months. The top 10 performers for the September 2018 to March 2019 period include companies like Titan, DV Labs, UPL and a lot of banks like ICICI, HDFC, Axis and the Kotak Mahindra Bank. Likewise, the worst 10 performers for the six month period include a number of automobile, pharma and metal companies. So just like what we did for March 2019, we repeat the same exercise for the other three intervals, that is September 2019, March 2020 and September 2020. We then apply our two scenarios. 
Scenario one is where we follow the upward momentum strategy and buy the top performing stocks for a period of six months and simply ignore the worst performing stocks. In this scenario, we find that this strategy would have given us absolute returns of 1%, 6%, 16%, and 36% in those six month periods. In fact, when we compare this performance with the Nifty 50 index returns, we see that the upward momentum strategy has given us an incremental return in each of the four six month intervals. So we are definitely onto something. Next, we apply scenario two, where instead of buying stocks like we did in scenario one, we start shorting the stocks using a downward momentum strategy. Shorting stocks is a technique where an investor first sells a stock and then after some time buys back the stock, thereby netting off his position. In other words, the short seller is betting that the price of the stock will fall and he can buy the stock at a lower price and make a profit in the process. Now, when we short the 10 worst performing stocks in our model, we see that the period between March and September 2019, and then again between September 2019 and March 2020, were extremely profitable for this scenario with gains of 16% and 28%. Remember, when we are shorting stocks, we want the price to go down and that is what has happened in this case where the downward momentum has pushed down the stock prices by 16% and 28% in the first two intervals. However, this downward momentum strategy has gone dramatically wrong for our model from March 2020 to March 2021 when we had our own GameStop type moment with an 18% and 52% loss in these two six month periods. In fact, if we read between the lines here, the data in our model seems to say that the momentum strategy might work effectively in a normal stock market scenario. But in situations where the markets have fallen dramatically, it's probable that inverse momentum starts working better, wherein the past worst performers recover faster than the past best performers. Now, this might be an aberration, but it's certainly good food for thought, and we'll try to bring in a little more data on this later in this video. So the quick takeaways of this section are, firstly, the core of the momentum investing strategy is rather simple. The winners keep winning and the losers keep losing. And secondly, as any hedge fund manager would say, there is money to be made when there is positive momentum, and there is money to be made when there is negative momentum. In the real world, all hedge funds follow a long short scenario, which is a combination of scenario one and scenario two that we just discussed. In fact, if we too were to buy the top 10 performing stocks and short the worst 10 performers, then here is how the results would have stacked up. In the first two intervals, the long short strategy would have been really profitable and our absolute returns would have been 20% and 40% over the Nifty 50. However, in the next two intervals, the long short strategy would have underperformed the Nifty 50, especially on account of the downward momentum being non-existent. Of course, a smart hedge fund manager would have already figured this out just like how we analyzed our data and would have approached the stock market shocks quite differently from a steady rising market. Momentum investing has been in use for over 200 years, but was generally ignored as a branch of study until the 1990s. Moreover, it's only in the last 10 years or so that passive investing based momentum strategies have come up and are seeing a lot of traction. In India, there are two momentum based benchmarks. The S&P BSE Momentum Index, which was launched in December of 2015, and Nifty 200 Momentum 30 Index, which was launched by NSE Indices in August of last year. Both these indices have set their value dates for 2005 and the index values are calculated at the end of each day. Now for the purpose of this video, we shall focus on the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 Index and that's primarily because this index can be invested into via an index fund that was recently introduced by UTI Mutual Funds. The construct of a momentum index is based on a set of rules and criteria which can be divided into five separate buckets. The universe of stocks, the basic construct, the weighting criteria, the constraints, and finally the periodic maintenance. Let's start with the universe. As the name suggests, 
the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 Index works only on the top 200 NSE listed companies. Additionally, the index is only looking for companies which have a listing history of at least one year and are available for trading in the derivatives or the FNO segment. This sort of shrinks the available universe of companies from 200 to some 130 companies. Now let's examine the basic construct of this index. Again, as the name suggests, the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 Index will select 30 stocks in an unbiased rule-based methodology. The stocks selected are based on their normalized momentum score, which is determined on the basis of their 6-month and 12-month price return after adjusting for their daily price volatility. Now, what is a momentum score? What is a normalized score? Or how volatility is calculated is something we won't get into in this video. But if you want to geek out and understand more on this, then you can check out the entire methodology by clicking on the link we have added in the description of this video. But having said this, one part that needs a little explanation is why the construct gives consideration to normalization and volatility. So as an illustration, let's say a biotech company stock price suddenly spikes up after the release of a favorable clinical trial result. So while there is short-term positive momentum, it is also very common to see that these gains may not persist for long. And for this reason, normalizing and adjusting the selection criteria based on volatility gives the momentum strategy a higher chance to yield better results. With regards to the Momentum 30 Index's weighting criteria, it uses stock weights as a combination of the stock's normalized momentum score and its free float market capitalization. With regards to constraints, individual stock weights in this index are capped at the lower of 5% or five times the weight of the stock in the Nifty 200. This 5% capping is done to avoid portfolio skewness towards a particular stock and to ensure adequate diversification. And finally, the index does a rebalancing on a semi-annual basis in June and December of every year. So now that we know how the Momentum 30 index is constructed, let's examine the fund's performance. Globally, Momentum Investing has enjoyed a strong run for many years, with cracks only showing when the stock markets went into a tailspin as experienced in the year 2000, 2008 and 2020. From an Indian context, a good way to judge the strategy's performance is by drawing comparisons between the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 Index and other available indices. For this purpose, we chose four popular indices. The Nifty 50, the Nifty Next 50, the Nifty Midcap 150 and the Nifty 200. The Nifty 200 was a mandatory benchmark comparison point as it uses the same universe of stocks as the Momentum 30 Index. Now, it's important to understand that this comparison with so many indices is not an apples to apples comparison, but the idea here is to form some sort of a basis or understanding. So we ran the numbers over a 15 year period and here's what the data shows. Notice that 2008 and 2009 were periods when the Momentum 30 strategy could not match with most other indices. Of course, 2008 and 2009 were also the time when the stock markets were massively dented with the financial crisis. But that doesn't seem to be anything more than an aberration as the Momentum 30 strategy went on to be the highest performing index across all five indices in seven out of the 15 years under consideration. In fact, when we compared them individually, we see that the Momentum 30 has returned more than the Nifty 50 in 10 years and has overpowered the Nifty 200 in 12 years. Now let's look at this data from a rolling returns basis. We've taken a five year rolling period here and evaluated the data on a monthly basis. Our analysis starts from January 2011, which measures the annualized returns from January 2006 to January 2011. The data shows that in the next 120 months, the Momentum 30 strategy has delivered the highest returns amongst all five strategies in 76% of these 120 months. In fact, what's most remarkable is that since August 2014, in 100% of the 77 months we have considered, the Momentum 30 index has delivered the highest five-year rolling returns. 
question now is should you invest in a momentum index fund perhaps the best way to examine this is by looking at the benefits and concerns posed by this strategy and we look at it from the point of view of the nifty 200 momentum 30 fund firstly this fund is a passive index fund which means all systems on selection ranking weights inclusions exclusions capping etc are all automated and there are no biases like what we see in an actively managed fund. Additionally, the methodology used in calculating the index values is available in the public domain. So if anyone uses that and does the same analysis, then one would get the same results. So there's a lot of transparency there. The second point of note is that the Momentum 30 index can often give a starkly different portfolio mix as compared to the benchmark. Case in point is the latest portfolio mix of the Nifty 200 and the Momentum 30 index. So while the financial services sector is over 35% in the Nifty 200 index, it is less than 10% in the Momentum 30 index. Similarly, there is currently a higher allocation to pharma, IT and metals in the Momentum 30 index due to the big run up these sectors have had in the last 12 months. This again can be pretty beneficial as it allows some tactical diversification from the rest of your mutual fund portfolio. In terms of the gaps or concerns, there are some studies we came across that says that a six month rebalancing might be a bit too long and that rebalancing should be done every two to three months. Additionally, some global momentum based funds also have an inbuilt alert system which allows the system to automatically rebalance at times of big spikes and big shocks like what we saw in March of 2020. It is our understanding that the builders of the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index have not opted for these global practices. Another concern is that the Momentum funds can be more volatile than other funds in spite of the automated rules which are in place. And the final observation we had was with regards to the impact of this regular churning of the portfolio, which is likely to lead to a relatively higher expense ratio. I use the word relatively because we are used to expense ratios of 0.1 to 0.2% when it comes to index funds. But in the case of UTI's Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index fund offering, the expense ratio might be anywhere from 0.4 to 0.5%. So that's something of note, but not something that should worry us too much if the performance delta is on the higher side. Net net, we think the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index requires some consideration on our part and can be a good addition to a long term and disciplined investing portfolio. In fact, in numbers, a monthly SIP started from January 2006 in the Momentum 30 index would have yielded a delicious 16.9% annualized returns as compared to 11.3% returns from the Nifty 50. So have a think about it and let us know in the comments box what you feel about this strategy. We shall also be tagging a few documents and articles that you can read up on the subject as you make up your mind about this approach. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video on Facebook and WhatsApp with your friends and family and do explain them the merits of subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week with another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.